Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us today for the session on the effective Go Anywhere sales training for quick customer wins. So my name is Sarin Nainan. I'm the product manager for Go Anywhere MFT at uh, Bulwark Technologies. I also have my co-host here, Gideon Wilkins, who is the EMEA partner manager at Help Systems, and uh, Nick Hogg, who's the director of technical training at Help Systems. Welcome, Gideon. Welcome, Nick. Thank you very much. Pleased to be here. Yeah, so before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that the session is being recorded. So if you would like to rewatch any portions of it or share it with one of your colleagues, you can do that later. We shall also be sending out a link of the recording within a day or so. So today's session will be an interactive session on how to have quick customer wins for Go Anywhere. Hence, please feel free to ask any questions using the chat window so that it can be addressed during the session itself. So here is our uh, agenda for the day. So first, we shall go through a quick introduction to uh, both help systems and also Bulwark. And then we shall proceed with the product positioning the qualifying questions to ask your prospects, and how to move the prospects from the sales cycle and also cross-selling to existing clients. And finally, we will also cover some success stories in the region. To start with, uh, so I'll just uh, go through an introduction of Bulwark. Uh, so before that, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we shall put up some questions for you in order to make this session an interactive one. So please put in your comments in the Q&A panel. So in the, uh, so in the meanwhile, let me introduce you to Bulwark and our uh, co collaboration with Go Anywhere or Health Systems as well. So Health is, uh, Bulwark Technologies is an award-winning specialized cybersecurity bad in the region. And we started our operations in 1999 and celebrated around uh, 20 plus years of successful cybersecurity excellence in the region. So uh, we are a privately held organization and we are profitable from the day one. And we are also proud to say that we represent 22 plus vendors and uh, we also carry the complete product and the service portfolio. And as you all know that we are operational across the GCC countries and in India as well. And as uh, like you, we have around 500 plus partners. And of course, you guys are our extended arms across the region. And we believe that uh, your capabilities combined with others, with us makes us more than when, when, when we are alone. So we expect your complete support as well. So we have a long-standing relationship with uh, Go Anywhere MFT since uh, 2014. Uh, since it was part of the Linoma software, which has been later acquired by Health Systems in 2016. Now, coming to our team, our MFT team at Bulwark, we have dedicated sales, marketing, and also technical team to support, uh, of course, uh, our partners like you and also our customers. And uh, last but not least, we also uh, you know, have four certified technical engineers who are the pillars of the Go Anywhere MFT at Bulwark. So we shall always be there to support you in case of any concerns or issues or any requirements as well. So as I said earlier, uh, here are the questions for you. Uh, please use the Q&A sessions to uh, you know, put in your comments. So we would like to understand from you, so what are the competition that you have come across and what are the typical objections that you hear from your customers? So please feel free to put in your notes in the Q&A session. And with that, I shall pass it on to Gideon. Uh, Gideon, over to you. Hey, thanks ever so much, Sarin. So um, hi, everybody. Gideon Wilkins. I, I manage the uh, uh, partner relationships for help systems in the Middle East and Africa. So. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes. I'm, I'm hoping that some of you have been on some of our webinars before, so you've probably heard about help systems. We are going to focus predominantly on Go Anywhere today, which is a an MFT product within our cybersecurity portfolio.
Just touching on health systems, we've got uh, over 18,000 customers worldwide. That's probably a little nearer 20,000 now due to some of our recent acquisitions. We've been in business for over 35 years. We're still a privately held company based out of North America. In 2019, we turned over just over $260 million in revenue. And we had about 900 employees. That's gone up to about a thousand mark now, again, through some acquisitions we've made in the last 12 months. And we have offices in over 25 locations worldwide. It's really important to say though, those offices are support and R&D offices. As we acquire companies, we leave them alone. So if you're buying somebody because of their revenue and their IP, part of that IP is their development and R&D teams. So if they're happy where they're working, it seems to be a foolish thing to do to make them move to another location. So that's why we have so many offices. Outside of North America, our go-to-market strategy is through partners. So we are absolutely committed to supporting our, our VADs in region and their downstream partners as well. Um, specifically around Go Anywhere, as you heard, we acquired a, a, a company called Lenovo back in uh, 2016, and that, that has become the bedrock for Go Anywhere. Um, we've integrated some of the other features and capabilities from some of our other products. And today, as well as Go Anywhere, we also uh, have another MFT solution that we've just acquired, and I'll mention that one in a moment. Um, probably the only thing to get across about MFT it is recognized as being the most user-friendly, the most value for money, uh, you know, the best MFT product on the market. And it's recognized by our customers who, who say that. There are, Gartner no longer do a magic quadrant for MFT, so we leave that to other people to do. We'll talk about that in a minute. But as you can see, we win awards regularly year on year on year and the most pleasing thing is that um, about 99 percent of our customers renew with us year after year so it's a very very sticky product thanks Nick. so can i just jump in here um, yeah, of course. You know, I, so this, this is nick and i came into help systems with the the clear swift acquisition last year and um, we've obviously had the relationship with lenoma going back four or five years yeah. and i think one of the things that's always kind of really impressed me about the the r d team to kind of pick him up in gideon's point is just how committed they are to constantly pushing their solution forwards and you know in the four or five years we've seen um go anywhere there's been such a dramatic increase in the fun functionality and the usability of that product and i think that's really something that's always kind of reflected when we talk to the the customers of go anywhere um which i think is why you you see such a high renewal rate which i think is kind of best of breed for a software solution in the industry and i think that's why you see this kind of um wealth of awards that have been passed across to go anywhere as well yeah, thanks. And, and, you know, this this session is meant to be interactive. It's interactive between Nick and I, but we really want it to be interactive with you guys as well. So please do keep sending in those questions and, and um, you know, be be as chatty as you can. I know that a lot of people, you know, sadly might be doing their emails while they're listening to this. Um, I'd ask you to stop for just 45 minutes because you might learn something useful. Um but also, you know, I know people are sometimes a little reticent to to go public with asking a question. But do this is this session is for you. It's not for me. I've been doing this for eight years, so um, I I know most of the answers, or at least I hope I do. Um, and we're here to try and help you. So, you know, when you're in a competitive situation, one of the things that's different about go anywhere to any other MFT product is just ask them to ask any competitor that you're up against, what's their major release cadence? How many updates do they do a year? Major releases, not patches. The answer for Go Anywhere is four. Every quarter we do a major release. In between, we do patches and update. So we do a major release, then we patch an update. Then we do another major release, then we patch an update. And that's been four a year for the last three years. So 
we have no desire to slow down our development. We're going to continue to improve the product. We continue to add machine learning, all the types of things that customers think are really important, although they don't understand them. Um, but we're continuing to do that. And I talked about positioning. So this is a report that's done annually by um, our friends at Infotech. Yet again, Go Anywhere MFT is ranked number one. What's interesting is number two is Ipswich. Move it. Now that was the market leader by a mile. Um, but there's an organization that you don't see many updates. We're not seeing a lot of investment. We're seeing them start to become pretty greedy in their renewals. And as a result, we're seeing them slowly slip down this magic quadrant. I mentioned that we just acquired another MFT product. Just, just the, if you can see there in number sort of three position is GlobalScape EFT. We acquired GlobalScape earlier on in the summer. Uh, we closed the deal in August. So, you know, we now have um, clearly the number one and number three MFT products on the marketplace under help systems. So, you know, but why this is important is this is what customers rate us as. To be honest, any of you that know how it works with large consultancy firms, it depends how much you spend with them. It depends how much consultancy you take from them. And ultimately, it depends on your revenues as well. But, you know, they are more favorable to people who spend a lot of money with them. We do not spend a lot of money with consultants to try and get our message across. Um, so, so, Gideon, do, yeah. um, do you do you find something like this magic quadrant to be useful during the sales cycle? Do, do you find that that helps to kind of move the conversation along and help to convince the prospect? Yeah, because they'll sit there and say, well, you know, well, what about Oracle MFT or what about SolarWinds or oh, Citrix? And I just say, well, look, do you mean these ones right down here? So their customers are rating them really lowly. It, it's a slide that I put up and speak about for no more than one minute. Okay. Uh, it, it mentally, it gives somebody a tick in the box. People are obsessed with buying a Magic Quadrant player. <laughs> yes, aren't they just? It's that kind of warm comfort blanket, isn't it? Because right. you, you know that somebody within the organization, within finance or whatever, is going to come back with the question of, well, is there a magic quadrant? Is there some kind of yeah. um, an, anal an analysis yes. from the uh, that's out there? And if you can, I think if you can go back and you can show that, look, we are the top right within the magic quadrant. And if you can can combine that with some very compelling functionality, and you can combine it with some incredibly compelling value, then I think you've got a very winning kind of argument, you know, both to the prospect but also for the prospect to take into the organisation. And I, and I, I think, Nick, that that's, that's, you know, what I'm hoping that the, the guys on the call will take out of, will take out of today. It's that you are, you're peeling back the onion in front of the customer. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tell them about your company, right? They've got to like you. They've got to understand you. And, you know, each one of you is different. You work for a different partner. But you will all have your unique sales value proposition. So the first thing you have to talk about is you, okay? Then, you know, we find that the companies that can articulate the help systems uh, message about simplifying IT, about, uh, you know, our belief that small and medium-sized enterprises should have access to exactly the same functions and capability as the biggest and largest companies in the world, but at a fraction of the price. And once they buy into you as, as their local partner and to the help system's wider story, then you talk about the products is a much easier conversation because they've already bought into, I like the sound of all of this. And of course, we don't talk about the products till we understand what the problems are, but we'll cover that in a minute. Okay, so let's move on to the 
go anywhere NFT solutions. So, you know, when I started to look at go anywhere, I, I, I think, you know, I heard about this managed file transfer solution. I kind of looked at something that was almost oh, probably around secure file transfer, but actually it kind of jumps out the more you dig into it of just how much of a, almost like a Swiss army knife in terms of all the functionality that's available within there. You, with the secure mail functionality, the, I, I guess the, a secure version of Dropbox or OneDrive that the, the organization can host themselves and all the kind of managed file transfer that goes with that. When you're talking to an organization, Gideon, what are you typically trying to draw out when you're, you're starting to paint the picture around what Go Anywhere is capable of? What are you focusing on? Yeah, so, so the first thing that you actually have to get under your belt is uh, we call it managed file transfer because it certainly does that. But actually, you're right. It's much, much more. It's a platform that enables an organization to move data either internally or with third party partners or customers, both in and outbound. And that's that's the big difference. Right. So. So it's about a company, and this is why everybody is a potential customer. We all have information that needs to be shared with us, whether we're a bank and it's somebody applying for a new account online, whether it's a sales inquiry into, into you know, one of the partner organizations on this call, whether it's an accounts payable or an accounts receivable or HR, you know, Everybody is moving data both internally and externally in and out. So that's what you've really got to understand first, okay? Because you're, you're, you're not just looking at saying, if you just think of it like a Dropbox, you're missing it by a mile. It's not just, if I put this file over there, I let somebody see it. With Go Anywhere, there's, there's workflow in there. There's business logic. There is the capability for any system to access any system, to get information, to convert it into a different format, to tell it to advise somebody or do something. So you've got the equivalent of like a, a light robotic process automation, or we call it workflow, built in with that data manipulation tool. So what I want to know is, how do you guys communicate? You know, how do you share data internally? How do you share it externally? Who do you share that with? What about incoming data? How does that come to you? Does somebody just send you emails? Do they fill in a form on your website? Because Go Anywhere MFT can interact with all of that. And for example, it can take an inquiry that comes in from a website and automatically create an account for that user without having to have a person get involved at all, all right? So yeah, understanding how data moves around their, their um, organization is the first point. The second point is, do they have any, do they have any criteria are they governed by anything? If they're in the financial services, they will have loads of governance requirements around data and the movements of data. If they're in the healthcare business, the same. If they have customer data in any form or shape, then they're covered by things like GDPR and all the, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more countries bring in the equivalent of a GDPR solution. So just understand, ask questions. What, how, what, when, where, why is the is the the golden rule? <laughs> so uh, I think those both make a huge amount of sense, and I, I think it's kind of quite interesting for myself coming from the the ClearSwift data loss prevention and compliance background that actually the everything we talk about about understanding the data flows, about understanding the maybe the the regulatory compliance legislations or just the the worries about you know having to share data securely so that it's not maybe accidentally breached or shared with the wrong people i think those are you know equally applicable when you're just talking to the, the mft solution but you can use the, the that kind of conversation to maybe identify some of the additional cross sell opportunities later on for some of the other features like the the, the data loss prevention and the compliance features that go within there Absolutely, Nick. But also, yeah. 
you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to justify why somebody has to put their hand in their pocket, right? And and you can't just justify it by saying it's good. Right? You have to justify it to each customer based on their set of needs and requirements. So, you know, if you know they have to be compliant against HIPAA if they're in the healthcare or GDPR if they've got customers outside of, you know, anywhere in Europe or, you know, uh, any any regulatory um, a SOX 2 or something like that, then, you know, when you're going back and you show them the price, you're going to be able to say to them, and don't forget, for this, you get this compliance, you get that compliance, which, you know, if you got breached, if you did this incorrectly, it could cost you millions of dollars. We're going to help you save all of that. So you're taking the risk out of their business of communicating. And that's what people want. They want to be able to communicate without thinking, oh, my God, am I in breach of this particular uh, rule right now? Or worse, not even caring. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think those kind of questions really help focus the mind because they, they can understand what's going to happen to them if it goes wrong. Yeah. I think the, the the first point you were making about basically just understanding the data flows and asking those questions is something we see a lot because it can be a case of people have this kind of nagging thought at the back of their mind where they know something's probably not being done in the correct way. But until we, somebody actually goes and asks them the question and almost gets them to evaluate what they're doing and almost challenges them, then they maybe live with that kind of uncertainty and that worry. But as soon as it's almost brought out into light, that's where I think you can really identify for yourself where they have risks within their existing business processes, where they have the uncertainty of not really knowing if people are doing the correct thing. And again, you can position the value of having a solution like the Go Anywhere MFT in place, because it will give them the visibility, it will give them the security and the confidence that the data has been, you know, they, they can follow the business processes, um, yeah. but they're enforcing the policies around that. Yeah, and, and I'm just looking at some of the answers on the chat, you know, and people are saying things like, you know, Microsoft, Dropbox, the competitors, and, yeah. yeah, all that type of thing. So, so this comes back to how do people value their data and their compliance? So if somebody says to you, I don't care, I'm not interested, do you know what? Get them to get a free Dropbox account and go and live your life. Um, because if they have no value to it, it's very hard to sell anything to somebody who uh, can't find a value. The reality is, you know, with Dropbox, you do not have the compliance requirements that you need. There is no audit. There is no control. There is no um, date and time stamp internally on all the systems. You can't tell exactly who opened it, when, what did they do with that information, can did I allow them to read it? Did I allow them to download it? So, you know, they are very, very different things. And, and you have to you have to spend a little time to understand the product so that you do know that Dropbox is, is not a competitor to an MFT. An MFT product is about automating through business triggers multiple actions in a, in a workflow, right? Dropbox is about if I, it's an SFTP, if I put something up there, I can let somebody have access to it. But, you know, that's not an auditable action. So if if being compliant is, is, is important, you know, you can almost take Dropbox straight out of the equation. And, and get away from it. I yeah, think there's some questions about Citrix. So this works on any platform from IBM AS400 through to Citrix, VMware, whatever. Okay, so it's platform agnostic, which is why we can go and get information from a DB2 database and convert it to a MySQL or an SQL or a, any other database that you care to mention. So okay. carry on. No, no. So um, I think it's interesting when we talk to organisations about data loss prevention and compliance, um, the, a lot of them have the worries around users using Dropbox and OneDrive and Move It and all of these other kind of you know, something they might use in their personal life. And th for those organisations, a lot of the worry is, I don't know what my users are doing. They could be putting any kind of data here. 
using the, the DLP and the compliance solutions to get that visibility can sometimes be quite tricky, especially if it's um, personal accounts. So mm. having the confidence of having a system that they're managing that's going to enable their users to share the data, but do it in a way where they get the visibility and the security, I think has, has proven to be very um, powerful as a message to a lot of the organizations we deal with around the DLP and the compliance side of things. Yeah, uh, and, and let's face it, you know, 10 years ago, I used Dropbox. Why? Because I wanted to send somebody a blooming great PowerPoint presentation and my company firewall wouldn't allow me to send something over 10, 10 gig. So, um, you know, you as a, as a human being, when the company puts something that stops you doing what you genuinely believe to be the right thing is, you'll find a way around it. Um, Dropbox for a social, for a private, I want to share my photographs with somebody is awesome, right? But as Nick, you said, it's not, it's not going to please any IT director. It's not going to please any compliance officer for any company of, of you know, even medium, small to medium size because you cannot control it. So. Okay. And when you're, you know, if we move away from the the, the kind of more I guess, end user sort of job boxes and so on, when you're positioning against some of the other competitors that appear in these, you know, um, analyst reports and so on, mm-hmm. um, it, are there any particular areas that you're focusing on? I, I know with Ipswich you were talking about, you know, they are they're not really introducing that many releases and new pieces of functionality. Whereas, you know, obviously Go Anywhere is just skyrocketing in terms of what it's building there. But with some of the other competitors out there, are there any areas that you really focus on when you're trying to put some clear water between Go Anywhere and the other um, solutions that are there? Yeah, definitely. So ease of use is number one. We can have a POC up and running inside an hour. Um, A lot of these other products, it'll take them weeks because they have to script, they have to write code. They don't have the same drag and drop technology that Go Anywhere has to create these workflows. We have over 600 pre-built actions, commonly used actions that we've built up over you know, uh, uh, over the last 12 years um, that, that comes out of the box. So, you know, with a lot of these other products, certainly things like IP switching things, you actually need to become a product specialist. You have to understand how to write script to get the thing to do something. Now, we aim our products at the keen IT amateur. And when I say keen IT amateur, I mean somebody who's got, you know, a couple of years experience can easily take, go anywhere out the box, and run with it, right? It is that logical. Obviously, through Bulwark, we can offer on-site training and we can offer, you know, assistance during those POCs. And Bulwark can do the POCs on your behalf so that you don't have to have all the demo um, capabilities. But you're up and running, right? Uh, Somebody like IBM, you know, you probably you'd probably allocate three to four months for a POC. And most of our customers want to be up and running and done with it within within a couple of months. So, um, you know, the the thing that takes the longest time is for the customer to provide us with a virtual box. And by the way, this this runs in there can run in their uh, private data center uh, on their premise. It can run on a physical server. It can run on a virtual server. Uh, it can run on vSphere, it can run on um, uh, uh, the Azure, what's the? Uh, uh, Hyper-V. Hyper-V, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, cool. And um, uh, Google as well. So, so you know, it will run anywhere. Uh, there is even a cloud um, PaaS offering where Help Systems has built a platform or platforms which we have scattered around in Amazon Web Services. So the customer can really choose the right commercial model that suits them. Um, So they can either have a subscription or they can buy a perpetual license. I think Um, one of the things I found quite interesting when I was getting to know Go Everywhere was the, the pricing structure. 
yeah. it seems to be very friendly almost um, for organizations. So it looks like you can start with maybe a, a low entry cost yeah. to address the issues you've got, but you've got that kind of modularity, you've got that kind of scalability that gives the, the prospects, the, the I guess, the confidence that as they find more ways that they might want to use it, then they can choose to deploy these additional features without having to essentially um, pay the earth for them, but also they can deploy them into an existing product. So it's much easier to kind of just get that function in there without having to go through an evaluation, a proof of concept and all these things with another vendor from that point of view. Is that kind of, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can start off with literally an F uh, SFTP server, you know, for a couple of thousand dollars for, for a perpetual license. Um, you know, and then you can add on the additional features and capabilities as as you come across the requirements for them. So, for example, you know, you might have an, uh, a company that wants, you know, SFTP, it wants workflows, it wants the automated workflows, and it wants reporting, but today it doesn't need AS2 connectivity uh, or it doesn't need connectivity into um, uh, Azure uh sharepoint or something like that but in six months time maybe they've gone to office 365 and they now want access into you know the azure cloud from their on-premise location we've pre-built about 80 connectors into the main um public software uh, public cloud platforms so whether it's azure google um uh alibaba whether it's salesforce whether it's um you know you name it we have built connectors that will automatically connect them up to that so yeah it's incredibly modular okay so you you're kind of focusing on on the ease of use uh, especially for the the, the non kind of technical i guess um, yeah. scripting types of people um which makes it you know easier for just a general person in the it part of the business and, or and, even value, a... and value for money you know compared yeah. to an yeah. ibm or even a an ip switch we we you know we we won't lose on on commercials against either of those our biggest competitor is i've got an inbuilt homegrown system and do nothing that's our biggest competitor lethargy uh, but <laughs> but again the the, the home built solution will not have the compliance requirements it may be that the guy who originally scripted it is no longer there they don't know how to change it when it breaks they can't find which bit of the code has broken and remember you break it as soon as you hard code something if you pick a file up and move it to a new location that process is broken. With if we go anywhere, we 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 tell you that that's what's happened. But if you've developed that yourself, you have to go through line by line and figure it out. So I think that's kind of quite an interesting point because one of our pre-sales uh, people in ClearSwift used to be uh, an IT admin for a large construction company, and the reason he really loves go anywhere is because he's he's come from a world where he's used to lots of scripted processes, and his point was that he only ever knew something went wrong when people started shouting at him. Because yeah. with a solution like Go Anywhere, he could be proactively told when something failed to work and then yeah. he could address the issue before anyone was even aware of it. Well, there's two ways you can do it. Actually, yeah. you can, you can, you can, as part of the workflow, if something fails or needs to retry, you know, one of the actions in the workflow might be send me an SMS to tell me that this process has, has failed on the first attempt or didn't complete you know it did 95 percent of it but something didn't happen because maybe it's awaiting another piece of information that wasn't updated in time so it will try again in five minutes and then it will complete but you know you can have sms's sent to you you can have emails you can create auto retries you can send a ticket to your seam you know, uh, there are just so many things that you can do. The, and the, uh, the, the best one to do is when you actually create the workflow, there's a test button. So you press test and it runs the script to make sure that it works before you hit deploy. So pre-test it, then deploy it. But you've also got, if something, you know, does go untoward, you will get an email telling you exactly where it failed in the process. 
Okay, so you know, and I, I, I think this conversation actually has kind of highlighted something that um, almost comes up in the next slide. You know, you, there are so many things you can do yeah. with the the solution, and there's so many kind of pain points for an organisation that you can address with the solution. That I guess sometimes that can maybe make it seem like a bit of a daunting thing when you're talking to a prospect. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think, and this is why qualification is so important because it, the one thing I hate is when a customer says to me, "Show me it." Uh, and I say, well, what's your use case? What are you What are you trying to do right now? And they go, no, no, just show me it all. Well, we could be there for a day. Um, you know, the secret is to try and understand what their problem is. We'll show them how to fix that problem. We'll then say, oh, and by the way, we can do all this other cool stuff as well. But you know, you're trying to solve this problem, so we'll focus on solving that problem for you. I think if you just go out there and sort of say, show me everything and you hope something sticks, that's a really bad way to sell. That's a really bad way to sell because you're, you know, they, they say in sales, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> so I, I think it's interesting from my point of view, um, doing training with customers where you will go and you talk to a customer who's literally just been through the buying cycle. Mm -hmm. and you'll train them on some of the functionality and so many times people will look at you and go i didn't know i didn't know the product could do this now that's either that well you know, we we've maybe failed to uncover something during the sales cycle which is actually one of the needs because sometimes it's i didn't know you could do this and actually that's something we really need to do other times it's like i don't know I could do that and i'm not that bored about it which would typically indicate to me that we've done the qualification correctly because mm -hmm. we've managed to draw out all of the important things and only focus on those because pe people always talk about um, there's only so many things somebody's going to remember when they're going through yeah. the sales cycle um, because they're potentially looking at our solution and a number, number of other vendor solutions. Um, one of our sales managers always talks about you've got to tell somebody something 18 times for them to remember that. And initially that seems a little bit of a, that's quite a lot. But from a training perspective, good God, that's correct. Because people can only retain so much information. If there was a few key things you would try and bring out, um, say from this sales sheet here, which is a, a useful resource, I think, to kind of have printed out and to hand when you're talking to a prospect. But if there's a few key things you would um, pull out as areas to focus on, what would those be? So I would I would definitely talk to them. You know, I, I the things I try to learn so that I can talk about it, you know, and this is here as an aid memoir. This is the type of thing you read just while you're waiting in the lobby to go in and, and have your meeting. But remember what the pain points are, because we sell this product to everybody from 25, 25 people organizations up to the largest organizations in the world. Actually, they've all got the same, the same pain points. We don't have a different version for big customers and a skinny version for little customers. The pain is the same. Um, I certainly would, you know, keep the differentiators at top of mind. Um, and, and I would absolutely stick to the fact that this is the number one product in the market space uh, that is the most flexible, best value for money, modular software solution, that is that is actually a platform for your data security going forward, because you know, as we talk about with cross sell in a minute, you know, you can bolt on uh, data classification into this. You can bolt on data loss prevention onto this. They're fully integrated, so you end up not just buying point products, but a family of solutions that form one cybersecurity data protection platform and that's what customers are crying out for they've, they've done everything else they bought all the point products and tried to integrate them and they're still getting hacked and they're still leaking information and they're still you know being fined and they're still non-compliant so it's pretty clear that that approach hasn't really worked and we're also seeing a lot of the big customer a lot of the big competitors you know 
taken themselves out of the game. System uh, semantic has taken themselves out of the game. Right? You know, unless you are one of their top 1,000 customers worldwide, which very few of you will have, they are not interested in you. Um, you know, we've seen CyberArk. They pulled out of the MFT space to focus on other areas. Right? They got fed up of losing to us. People like Oracle and Citrix and IBM, you know, they, they're they not proactively developing it. They, they kind of got a cobbled together solution because customers asked for it. But you don't see them investing in it. You don't see them leading with it or pushing with it. That's purely a, oh, yeah, I've got that if you want it solution. Okay. So, and I think we've got, it's strange in the marketplace to see something that's basically the number one technology, which also gives you such value for money and such a wealth of functionality. So you, you're not really compromising on any of those three points of that triangle, which I think makes that for a kind of very compelling story when you're talking to an organization. But obviously, you know, in your experience, when you are working your way through an opportunity from a you know a, a cold call, a marketing leader, whatever, you know, it's easy to talk about bands and budget authority, needs and timeline, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But if we were to kind of put that into your experience, mm-hmm. what do you think so, works? So every every company, you know, pretty much every salesperson I've ever met has been trained at some stage on some kind of sales methodology, right? And whether it's BANT, whether it's a medic, whether it's, you know, selling to sea level, fundamentally they're all the same, right? You know, so so I, I assume that everybody's got that. I think I think what it boils down to for me is is regardless of whether you use BANT or anything else, are you talking to the right people? Do you understand what they are trying to achieve? And do you understand the the impact of them not achieving that? And the last key bit is when do you need to do this by, right? And I think that's the one thing that that isn't done well uh, in the region. And, And I only base it on the fact that COVID, you know, regardless of COVID, you know, we see so many deals that take that we think are going to close and then take another two months to close because I don't think we understood the impact of what happens if you don't do this. Your, your ideal sale is, you know, you're talking to the person who signs the check. You know exactly what their pain is and you can articulate it. You've got the right solution to solve their problems and you've got a compelling financial uh, uh, case to do that, right? If you've got that, you, you're you're 99% of the way there. Then all you've got to do is make sure that your timing is the same as their timing. Because if they think that's fantastic, I must do that by 2022, and you're sitting there saying, "Yeah, I'm forecasting it for November," you know, there's. There's a huge gap, right? Now, if you've done your job correctly, you would know or you would understand, you know, that if they don't become compliant, they're open to regulatory penalties, which could cost them hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars, okay? So, you know, they need to get compliant now, not in six months' time. Uh, you know, they might be due for an audit. So they've got to get compliant before the audit. So I think, you know, don't talk to the lowest IT guy because he'll tell you he wants to order it. But if you're not talking to the guy who owns the budget, you know, you're not going to get the, the truth. So you have to go high. You, you know, I always look for the IT guy to be my guide. Uh, and I know that there are some, you know, uh, regional challenges around sometimes get, trying to talk to the senior person. But if you don't speak to the person who owns the budget, if you don't understand their pain, and if you don't know what their time frame is, then you are guessing. And, and that's, again, hope it's not a strategy. Cool. Okay. That all kind of makes sense. Um, in terms of the, the kind of cross-selling side of things yeah. to, you know, e- existing clients and talking about referrals and so on, have you got any useful advice that we can give the guys here? 
so uh, what I've what I've learned over my twenty five years of sales is that um, people worry about making decisions. Right, the people will fret. They'll go over it. They'll get three quotes. They'll they'll read all the Gartner reports. Um, you know, they'll 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 really sit down and stew over it. And and at some stage, they have to make a decision. Whether you like that decision or not, they are really happy that they've made a decision. Now, obviously, if they've decided in your favour, that is the best time to ask for. Um, to ask for a referral because they are 100% thinking about and focused on you. They feel good because they've made a decision in your favor. And at that moment in time, nothing's gone wrong and everything is rosy. So I always, when I hear that, that you know, when they tell me you, you've been awarded the contract, I go, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for your business. We'll now sort out, sorting out the contracts and everything, but tell me, you must have a network of peers in other organisations. Do you know anybody who you think might be, uh, you know, might be open to a conversation like this? And that is the best time to ask, because if you wait till tomorrow or till the contract's done or until it's installed, by then the guy has switched off. Now, even the next day he's switched off. He's moved on to his next decision. He's forgotten about you. I've made that decision. I'm happy. Now, what am I going to do about this endpoint protection? It's that um, kind of people buy from people thing, isn't it? People the, buy that, from that, people. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah the referral when, it, when it comes to the cross-selling, I think if you get in the door with something like an MFT, that obviously then comes back to that whole data life cycle conversation. And that can open up the doors to DLP and to docu and to data classification conversations. Even if they've got DLP, you know, I guarantee you that 85% of all DLP deployments internally are deemed as a failure. Because there's a lot of point, yeah. There's a lot of point that comes with that, isn't there? There's a lot um, of pain. There's a lot of false positives. You've watered down the policy to the point where you might as well not have it. It hasn't delivered the um, return on investment that, that everybody, you know, expected. Uh, it might be that they're a Semantic customer and have heard that Semantic have, you know, not treating their customers well anymore. So, you know, there's... There's wider conversations that bleed in, and Help Systems has that portfolio that open up opportunities. But even if it's not for a Help Systems product, for you as that reseller partner, you know you want to sell all the solutions in there that you can. The first thing you have to do is sell one that gives you or maintains or enhances your good reputation. Go Anywhere MFT is definitely going to enhance your reputation with the client. And it gives you so many opportunities with the kind of extensibility that goes on from that, which you know, those kind of additional sales, those cross-sell sales are always going to be easier to do, aren't they, than uh, getting that, the initial foot in the door. Yeah. Now, you, you you talked earlier about um, un, you know understanding the, the data flows for people and how they're querying the data. Um, you, there's always kind of qualifying questions we can put up. Um, but again, from your experience, what kind of things are you asking people about well, I'm not going to read. Yeah, I'm not going to read the slide. Those yeah. those are the typical questions that I ask. You know, how, what, when, where, why. If 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 you're being asked to propose a solution for a client, it has to be right and fair that you're allowed to ask them how they do it today, what works well, what doesn't work well. You know, why are they looking to change? Because lethargy is every salesperson's biggest enemy. You know, how many times have you gone through the whole sales cycle for a customer to say, do you know what, I'm not going to do anything. I'll just stick with what I've got. And that's because either we didn't uncover that the, 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 the they had a big enough pain or issue, uh, or we assumed that the pain was bigger than, than they think it is. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to read those questions, but how, what, when, where, why? How do you do it? Why do you do it like that? What happens if it breaks? You know, 
just ask as many questions you you know i was always told you've got two ears and one mouth and and from a sales perspective you should use them in that proportion it's not about you walking in and then just taking 50 minutes to tell them about you and your company and then ask them four questions if that's how you're doing it i guess you're doing it wrong yeah, I, I think that's brilliant advice. You know, from somebody who's come from the almost the the, the pre sale side of things and watched a lot of salespeople go through these kind of uh, meetings and sessions, you can tell the good ones are the ones who are constantly probing to uncover what the the organisation really is worried about, but just doesn't really really want to confront almost. Yeah. Um, and they're they're the ones who are listening for the answers, mm -hmm. so they they can answer you know, ask the sort of sensible follow on question rather than just you know sitting there letting the prospect talk and just pre mentally preparing their next question, the next thing they're going to say, but not really reacting to the sometimes the the, the sort of golden gifts you've just been handed to you that you can take advantage of there. No, I mean, just gonna... these, these questions are really light yeah. mm. and nobody's, nobody's going to take offence at you asking those type of questions. Now, so I would literally, I'd have that printed off inside my folder so that I don't forget to ask them. But I'd also have what I really want to know might be some commercial information. So I want to get the guy answering easy questions. I'm not going to start off with my first question being, so how much, yeah, have you ever had a data security breach and how much were you fined? You know, he's going to go very defensive very quickly. <laughs> so I'm going to get him, you know, I'm going to get him in the yes, yes, yes mode. And then I'm going to slip in my, you know, my more um, impactful questions once he's got into the habit of answering some simple ones, right? Because I don't want to turn him off on the first thing. Mm. Okay, no, just kind of conscious of time. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, the guy, guys from the work have got a couple of uh, interesting use cases for their region. Um, is there a, a kind of success story you would call out here that would be of interest to the audience? So uh, DXC, DXC sold um, Go Anywhere to the Dubai Ministry of Finance. They use that to communicate to the 11 central clearing banks in the region. So, uh, you know, if, if the Ministry of Finance puts something into a folder, it is automatically converted and transferred into the 11 central clearing bank systems. So without any human intervention, it can't be a mistake. They can't, um, they can't forget to do it. They can't say I didn't get it. Um, I mean, these these here are just some of the accounts that my partners have signed up this year alone. Um, and I put them in there. Some of them are specifically in the Middle East. Some of them aren't. Um, but, you know, it's just to say that we sell to literally everywhere. Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, um, you know, Port of Salah, you name it. Um, uh, commercial uh, international bank in Egypt, you know, uh, all the way through to the Israeli post office. So, you know, there isn't anybody that doesn't move data around and therefore is not a potential go anywhere customer. Brilliant. Cool. So I think that's been some very useful insight from Gideon there about um, how you can identify opportunities and move them through the sales process to successfully closing them. Um, I'm going to hand back to Serene now because there's a couple of use cases for your region that I think might be of interest to all of you. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Gideon. So yes, so as uh, Nick was mentioning, I'll just go through one or two of the use cases in this region that we have uh, already implemented of one of the customers who are already using the Go Anywhere MFT. So, so this is one of the major oil company in the region uh, who's currently using the solution. So but they are very much satisfied with the solution as such. Uh, so as uh, Gideon and Nick were telling about, you know, how to, you know, uh, probe the customers and how to get the right information from them, et cetera. Uh, so we understood that this particular customer, they 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 had an existing solution. So that was uh, remote connect from CA. And uh, so the major concerns that the customer, when we spoke to the customer, we had a discussion with uh, the different teams in the organization. 
So the discussion was mainly, uh, it started with the IT infrastructure team. Of course, the retail team had to be in, involved. The IT security, of course, for the compliance part and also the applications team who will be, uh, because they are the ones who's going to manage the application. They and the retail team will be handling the application as such. So they had different concerns, you know, when it comes to their uh, current or uh, the existing file transfer solution that they were using. So it was very difficult for them to manage the solution. Uh, and it also required lots of scripting and programming as well when they're required to do any, any modifications. Uh, and also uh, this particular solution, the Remote Connect also came with the proprietary protocol. So, you know, which was used to transfer the files, which is not com compatible with the organization's environment as well. So they wanted to use something which is uh, uh, very user friendly. Uh, where the proper uh, the protocols can be, you know, the common protocols that we usually use are SFTP, FTPS, HTTPS protocols. So this was the uh, main concerns that the customer had. Of course, the process uh, took a little longer, like six to eight months, for them to uh, finalize on the project. That is because the requirements were majorly to transfer files automatically. Uh, so they don't want any human intervention or minimize the human intervention to the minimum. So they wanted to send uh, uh, files automatically from their head office to all their uh, outlets for any price changes or any uh, any data that they wanted to send. And also there were files which were sent from all these outlets back to the head office. So after each shift, there needs to be, uh, there were some files that need to be mandatorily sent back. Uh, so they also wanted to eliminate the use of the SMB protocol and minimize, as I mentioned earlier, minimize the uh, use of human intervention as the people at the uh, site offices or at the outlets that were not tech savvy. So they wanted to have a very simple and user friendly solution as well. And they also wanted, the, of course, the data transfer to be uh, automated, of course. So as I mentioned, the process took about uh, six to eight months time. And uh, so what we did, uh, we had this initial discussion with the customer. Uh, we had the discussion with them on what were the issues they really faced. And uh, of course, we had tried to understand from them the different concerns that they had with their existing files from the technical perspective and also on the commercial perspective as well. Of course, after that, we uh, proceeded with a demo presentation to their team, entire team, on how the Go Anywhere MFT worked. And uh, after that, uh, the, we had sent them the budgetary pricing when they asked for a POC, uh, because we need we have to make sure that they had the budgets in place to go for the solution before they proceed with a, a POC or involved a technical resource to uh, go ahead with the uh testing part so after the poc was completed uh you know the customer was really very happy because uh, they understood that the solution the go anywhere mft was uh, very powerful but not very very technical uh and also it, it it focused on what really matters so the team was pleased to see that you know it had uh, different functionalities built into one so like user to user collaboration where uh, similar to Dropbox, we have the secure mail and secure folders, which is used to send large files. And the most uh, they were impressed with was uh, our automation features, uh, how the files were, the file transfers were automated between their uh, head office and also the site offices and the protocols that we used. So it was not proprietary protocols, but it was the protocols used by common protocols like SFTP, FTPS, HTTPS and AS2, et cetera. We also had out of the box uh, project designs. So everything was a drag and drop and they did not work on any scripting or programming. So it was, uh, it did, uh, you know, it, uh, it did not require the scripting knowledge or programming knowledge. You just uh, need to understand how the workflow had to be and you think anybody could do it. And uh, the most important part was also they found that the solution was affordable. So this was possible because we had given the prices at the beginning of, uh, you know, before starting the POC as well. So the process, we also understood from them the process that was involved in, um, in the procurement. So, of course, it went through an RFQ process. Uh, and also then the negotiation finalization like any other project. 
So what did they achieve? Uh, so what did they achieve is they minimized the amount of human intervention in any, uh, any uh, file transfers. And there was complete auditability of what is being transferred. So they were completely aware of what is being transferred between the sites or between the head office and also the uh, um, head office and the uh, site offices as well. Uh, of course, they it, uh, also eliminated the need of the workflow or, or the Windows task uh, scheduler, which is used uh, for usually uh, scheduling the tasks. So we here are using the Go Anywhere. They currently are using triggers, or schedules, or monitors to transfer any files between the head office and the you know site offices. So here, first they went for some of the modules because we are have different modules. So they went for some of the modules. And uh, it was uh, very recently that, you know, they, uh, because of some SMB, because there was a rule that the SMB protocol has eliminated, they wanted to eliminate the use of the SMB protocol. And of course, they went ahead with the agent implementation as well. Uh, so the approximate value for this uh, particular project was around $200,000. Um, yes, of course. So they are a very happy customer of ours. And of course, also they are also open to any uh, references as well. Uh, Nick, could you please move to the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So this is one of the use cases of a banking customer here in the region. So again, uh, of course, we know that uh, we have uh, the, the MFTs being used in mostly in the banking or the BFSI sector. So here the main uh, pain points that the customer was facing is they had to invest a lot of time and resources in performing some of the daily or the daily tasks. But although we call daily tasks, so those are very critical files that were transferred. So these files were being transferred from either uh, from some of their uh, major customers or it was towards a central bank or it was something related to credit cards, debit cards, or any financial data. And they also had a lack of visibility and auditability as well uh, of the data or the file that has been transferred and uh, they were not getting uh, notified properly. And of course, they wanted to comply by the PCI DSS, which is mandatory for all the BFSI sector. And another uh, concern that they had was the encryption decryption keys that were reside that, uh, in, that was residing in, residing with the concern team who performed the task manually. So it was a manual process that they were doing for the decryption encryption of keys, and uh, and uh, the keys resides with the concern team. So that was again another concern we uh, faced because it was against the compliance, and another uh, you know the one of the main pain point they faced was they were using multiple tools for various tasks, which could be achieved uh, with Go Anywhere MFT itself. So multiple teams were involved for a particular task, so which is very time consuming. Uh, so that is another uh, you know, pain point that they were having in the organization. So here as well, the different teams were involved. So we had discussions with applications, IT security for the compliance part, but the owner, owner of the the product or the project owner is from the it infrastructure team uh, and of course the database team was involved and the compliance team as well uh, so these were the teams that were uh, that uh, were involved and we had a very strong discussions with them couple uh, several rounds of discussions with different teams because of course you know that everybody won't be available together but uh, so the main requirements that they had what uh, you know, they wanted to have integration with their central banks for some certain activities uh, that, that was being uh, performed. They also wanted to automate their PGP encryption and decryption of the critical files. So that again, we see this particular requirement, the PGP encryption and decryption that I just wanted to highlight here. This is also a mandatory requirement from the banks uh, that any customer who's transferring them any files, any files that have been transferred to the bank has to be PGP encrypted. I'm sure you would have come across, uh, you know, requirements like this, or this record for opportunities like that. So that is my suggestion over here at this moment. And uh, another thing that the bank was looking out for the integration with their MQ server. 
and uh, automate the world file check. So these are some of the banking use cases, specifically to the banking use cases, uh, you know, which the bank was looking out, and also integration with the cloud file transfers, like the Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, et cetera. Of course, integration with databases for automating the DB queries or for any, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, querying as well from the databases. And of course, they wanted to do the data translations. And also the ad hoc file transfers using HTTPS, SFTP as well. And this is mainly for the large file transfers. They were using it for the for uh, for both internal and also external users, which is also integrated with uh, you know uh, with their antivirus and the DLP solution using the ICAP protocol. So this was the requirement that they had. And of course, we had the discussions with the, all these teams, several rounds of discussions as we, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So we had a demo presentation with them, followed by uh, the sharing of the budgetary codes. And uh, of course, then there was the RFQ process. So during the RFQ process, again, there was a technical discussion on the complete RFQ because it was not a closed RFQ. It was an open RFQ uh, where they wanted to uh, test uh, or uh, uh, test different products, in fact, even the solutions that they were using. So here, uh, one highlight or, yeah, of course, when, you know, when I talk about the achievements, of course, I'll come into that. And during the POC as well, or uh, during the technical discussion, they found that our solution was very easy to use compared to whatever they had seen earlier. And uh, they were getting a single solution for user to use a file transfer of collaboration. SFTP transfers, automation, auditing, everything they were going to have a single solution which was easier to manage as well. And of course, it had uh, it has out of the box uh, project designs where they could just drag and drop the projects or the task for performing any workflows uh, without the need of any scripting and programming. And of course, then uh, after the POC, I mean, after the technical discussion, out of, uh, you know, after the RFQ was released, then of course there was again the redesigning of the projects based on their uh, uh, budgets, redesigning of the solutions, then negotiations, and the final uh, is the finalization of the project. So what they achieved here is they eliminated the complete manual intervention and they automated the encryption and decryption processes and uh, complete auditability um, and also auto resume is another uh, important feature here what they achieved as well the major uh, use here is or the major advantage for them here is the elimination of multiple uh, solutions in performing various tasks thereby reducing the opex so they were using four different solutions or four different products to achieve what go anywhere was go anywhere is offering them and also they eliminated the use of MQ tools or the message queues uh, tools to push the files from their critical applications like uh, T24 or Swift applications. And all the critical tasks were scheduled, triggered, and also monitored. So they were minimal uh, manual intervention so that there is no errors. And also they eliminated the use of third-party cloud-based solutions like Dropbox, Box, Simplicity, and uh, other solutions as well. So, so this so the value of the project was approximately around uh, to fifty thousand dollars. And uh, the, as I mentioned, it had multiple uh, solutions here. The main competition that we faced here was with Jscape, with Tipco, Citrix, and um, uh, there was uh, one more solution. Yes, four solutions totally. We have replaced it here as well. Uh, so that is the advantage that we see with Go Anywhere. And customers really, once somebody who starts using the solution, I am 100% sure that they will not, uh, you know, uh, uh, look out of the solution as well. Uh, so that's it uh, about the, you know, some of the use cases from my side. Yeah, over to you, Gideon. Brilliant. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, guys. Um, I think as we've run through, we've covered off the majority of the questions as they've come in. Um, there was somebody who was after a technical demonstration of the product, which I'm sure we can pick up um, offline and get that arranged. Um, I, I think from what Gideon was talking about, some of the, the, the key value for the Go Anywhere solution 
um, yes, we could focus on the the, the very uh, extensible pricing side of things and very reasonable pricing side of things. But I think if we really understand how the customers are sharing data today or the prospects are sharing the data today, that's where we can start to identify their worries about manual processes, their worries about compliance, uh, legislation and so on, and really start to show the value of the Go Anywhere solution to them, but also to help them understand that there's a, there's a low entry point so they're, they're really just purchasing those components that will address their business issues but because of the modularity of the solution because of the extensibility of the solution they do have the option of growing over time to address maybe some other business issues as they uncover them from there so with that thank you very much uh, for your time um serene anything else you want to add um... No, that's it. So uh, some of the questions that came up here was about some of the competitors, namely Citrix, VMware, you know, uh, move it, of course, that is IP switch, then Crush FTP, and the Dropbox. Yeah, and uh, I think, um, you know, Gideon was talking about this on the, the competitor slide. Okay. With okay. The, the more kind of... Um, a sort of general general public, I, I guess, versions of the the one drives, the drop boxes, and the move move it and so on. I think for some organisations, they will see those as good enough for the business issues they have, and you're not necessarily going to persuade them that these um, aren't appropriate for their business. When you start to talk to the, the organisations who have the regulatory requirements, then I think they will very quickly understand the, the value of having a system that you can manage, that you can own yourself, that you can control access to, that you can get full visibility of the data sharing amongst, and you can control that kind of data sharing with in there to protect from the, the external threats like the ransomware and the malware, from the DLP and the compliance risks to kind of address those uh, compliance concerns that they have. I, I think, you know, um, Go Anywhere gives you some very clear arguments for those kind of organisations that are worried about the regulatory side of things, or even if they don't have any particular compliance legislation that applies to them, which is becoming far fewer organizations these days because things like GDPR and other privacy regulations are, you know, would even apply to your own employees or your customers and your business partners. But you know, they might see the value of their own intellectual property, they might see the value of their uh, just their reputation where a data breach could cost them a lot of money. Um, so giving them the confidence that they can enable the business to share the data, they can enable the automated processes and the manual processes, but they get the visibility within there um, that people are doing the right thing and they're prevented from maybe making mistakes, I think is usually powerful. When you start to look at some of the, uh, the other MFT vendors that are out there. I think the key things to stress on here is the this cadence of new functionality that's always coming to go anywhere, this extensibility within there, plus the, the, the flexibility of the pricing really starts to separate go anywhere from the other, you know, more formal solutions that are out there in the marketplace. Okay. Okay. I think we've touched on everything. Yes, we have. Brilliant. So, if there's any questions that you have, uh, uh, you, of course, you can get back to us as well. Uh, so, of course, there were some questions about uh, the technical product session, sessions, of course, that we can take it out uh, offline as well. So, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, hope the session was helpful and uh, uh, informative as well. So, we look forward for your feedback as well. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers.